You're listening to Stand Out Get Noticed, episode 233. Hi there, Rockstar, and welcome to Stand Out, Get Noticed. I'm Christina Cantors, your host. I'm a speaker, coach, and the founder of The C Method, where I help high-performing professionals and business leaders to build powerful communication skills. You can learn more at thecmethod.com. Now, I was in the US in August and early September this year, and I was fortunate enough to go to the tennis, the US Open. We went to day one and saw many talented players battle it out. And the tennis finals um, were played after I got back to Australia. And I was really excited when I heard that Canadian Bianca Andreescu won the women's tournament against Serena Williams. I mean, Serena is an incredible champion. She's arguably the best tennis player ever. And Bianca defeated her, which is an incredible achievement. Yet in the post-match interview, Bianca said to the crowd, I know you guys wanted Serena to win, so I'm so sorry. She apologized for winning the US Open. Now, Many news outlets took this to be quite humorous and made comments like, oh, how Canadian to apologize. But I I was shocked. I think, I thought that this was a clear example of a destructive habit that many of us have, which is to apologize unnecessarily. Do you notice yourself doing this? Saying sorry for things that you really shouldn't be sorry for? saying things like, excuse me, sorry, or sorry, I have a question, or what's your name, sorry? It may seem harmless, but apologising unnecessarily can be detrimental to your self-esteem, to your communication, and to your impact in the workplace as a leader. And in this episode, we're going to explore why it's harmful, how apologies show up in our communication, and how to shift this habit. And my goal is, for this episode, I, I want to give you permission to stop apologizing and to start being more assertive and more impactful in your communication. Does that sound good? Okay. Um, before we get to that, um, I do want to give a couple of shout outs to two very special podcast listeners. The first is Luke from Nottingham in the UK. And Luke was kind enough to jump on a quick call with me to share his feedback on the show. He said that he loved the episode about non-gendered language, which was episode 207. He said that that one thing he likes about the podcast is my voice. He says it's very calming. So thank you, Luke. And he requested more ukulele music interludes. So I'll see what I can do, Luke, about that. If you're new to the show, when you hear the ukulele playing, that's me on the ukulele giving it a go because I like to show people that you know, I'm learning, you know, if you want to build up a skill, you've got to be maybe not so good at it at the start and you've got to learn. So me playing the ukulele on the show is my demonstration of how I'm learning a new skill too. Now, the second listener is Lauren from Melbourne, um, who has been, I'm pretty sure she's from Melbourne, definitely Australia. Um, She's been a listener for two years and she shared something really interesting. She said that the interviews that I do help her to learn how to ask great questions. So observing my interview style has been beneficial for her, which honestly I had not considered that before. I didn't realize that that was helpful for, for people. So thank you, Lauren. It was great feedback. You know, it is, it's feedback like this that enables me to make this podcast as valuable as possible for you. So I want to thank everyone who has written to me with, with your feedback, um, who's, who answered the survey, who's left an iTunes review or shared the podcast, I'm extremely grateful for your support. I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into the meat of this episode of why you need to stop apologizing all the time. (laughs) So firstly, let's let's talk about some reasons as to why you need to stop over-apologizing. The first reason is that it erodes your self-confidence and your self-esteem. When you hear yourself say, I'm sorry, all the time, it communicates to your subconscious that you've messed up, that you've done something wrong. So you're constantly thinking, oh, my bad, I've done something bad, I've messed up, I've done something wrong. 
when in reality, you may not have done anything wrong at all. The second reason why you need to stop over-apologizing is when you apologize, it does suggest self-doubt to other people. So, you know, a lot of people come to me and I know people in the Facebook group, they, they write, you know, I want to be more confident. That's a goal. I want to feel more confident when speaking to a group. Now, when you apologize for things and say, oh, I'm sorry about this or, you know, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I need to, you know, I'm sorry, I need to ask a question. That suggests that you aren't very confident in yourself or you're not very confident in your ideas. So if you want to project more confidence and, of course, feel more confident, then you need to stop apologizing all the time. The third reason why you need to stop over-apologizing is that it, it, it actually strengthens your need for external validation. So this may not be the case for everyone, but you may find yourself saying, oh, I'm so sorry, in, in order for someone else to say, no, 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 that's fine, that's totally okay, you're, you're doing great. So you're, you're, you're apologizing in the hopes that someone will then turn around and say, oh, no, 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 you're fine, you're great. You know, this is not an emotionally healthy place to be. Um, I once had a colleague who would come up to me after a conversation, like an hour after a conversation, and he would say, I'm so sorry, did, did what I say before offend you? And I'd just say, no, no, it didn't. And he'd be like, okay, I just wanted to check, sorry. I'm like, oh, okay. And, and, and I don't know if that was his, him needing my validation to be like, no, you're, you're fine. You're great. What you say is awesome. I don't know if that was the case, but it could have been. Eventually it got so annoying because he kept doing it. I'm so sorry. Did that, did I offend you? I eventually turned around to him and said, you know what? You, you really need to stop apologizing for that and thinking that, you've offended me because you really haven't. So can you please stop apologizing? And he turned around and said, okay, sure. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. I'm hoping that he learned. I'm hoping he got there. <laughs> I'm rooting for him. Yes, you got there. Um, and finally, when you apologize all the time, it does make your speech more fluffy and less clear. And I'll share some examples in a moment. Um, instead of sharing a point, you might apologize before sharing that point, right? Which means that your point loses impact. So those are some of the reasons why we need to stop apologizing. I want to share with you what it can actually look like. So you might be already reflecting on what you say and thinking, oh crap, yes, I do that. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm perfecting this. I used to do this, all right? So I've gone through the same thing. So for example, when I was, I work at a co-work space. There's many people there. We have to book meeting rooms. And I would find that when I booked a meeting room, say for 1 p.m., I'd go to the room and the people who'd booked the room before me were still in there at like five past one. So it's clearly my time to use the room because I've booked it. But I would notice that I would knock on the door and be really apologetic. I'd be like, I'm so sorry, I've got this room booked. And then I would like hunch my shoulders and I dip my head and like a like a really in a really apologetic way. Oh, I'm so sorry, I have I have this room booked. When you think about it, apologizing for kicking people out of a room at a time that you'd booked already is ridiculous. Because it's their fault for running over time. They should be the ones apologizing for running over time, right? So I caught myself doing this and I realized, why am I, why am I apologizing? I'm not in the wrong. I'm just trying to get to my meeting room for this client meeting, this important client meeting. So now I just knock on the door, polite, still politely, and I say, excuse me, I have this room booked for 1 p.m. Thanks so much. Right? You hear the difference? It's, it's still polite, but it's assertive and I'm not apologizing. And no one has ever turned around to me and been like, oh my God, Christina, you're so rude for kicking us out of the room. No, people get it. They're like, oh crap. Yes, I am sorry. I ran over time. Something else I used to do when I met people I, and I hadn't sort of been introduced to them straight away, I'd go up to them later and say, sorry, what's your name? As if I was supposed to have mind read what their name was. 
as if it was like my fault for not guessing their name. Again, I would think to myself, why am I apologizing for not knowing their name when they haven't actually been introduced to me? Maybe if I'd forgotten their name and I'd say, maybe it's okay to say, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Could you please remind me again? May, like that would be more appropriate, but not, <laughs> not when I've never met them before. Okay. Other ways that my, other ways that we apologize when we get up to speak, tell me if you've ever done this or noticed someone else doing this. Someone says, or you get up to speak and you say, oh, so I didn't get much time to practice this and it's not quite finished yet, but, and then they start. Or they might say, oh, I'm just getting over a cold, so please bear with me. Or they say, well, this is my very first time doing this, so I'm a little nervous. Or perhaps in meetings when sharing and about to share an idea, you might say, you know, I haven't had much of a chance to think about this, think this through, but, or I'm no expert here, but, or I just have a little suggestion. So even though these are not like technically, you're not technically saying I'm sorry, but these come across as apologies. It's like a hidden apology. You are essentially apologizing for your ideas or apologizing for your presentation before you've even shared it. And this can play out in many different ways. So my mum, I love her dearly. She cooks the most delicious food. She's a wonderful cook. And I'm very fortunate in that we do a family dinner once a week or once a fortnight and we go over to my parents' house and mum puts on this beautiful dinner. And something that she used to do all the time is that she would come in, she'd prepared this beautiful, like a roast lamb and delicious potatoes and a salad. And it was all gorgeously presented. And she would place the food on the table and we'd sit in there going, oh, wow, this looks amazing. And before we had a chance to serve it up, she says, I hope it's cooked. Um, I used a different cut of meat, so I'm not sure how well done it will be. Um, make sure you check if it's salty enough. Is it salty enough? I'll get more salt. Now, for a while, I never really noticed this behavior. You know, I never really noticed this as this was sort of just how my mum communicated. But as I, as I, you know, became more aware of how we communicate and I started to notice and I began to gently ask her to stop apologizing for the food because we know it's going to be delicious no matter what. And I, and I told her, you know, we're really grateful that we've, you've taken the time to cook us dinner. And how special are we? But I know it's a difficult habit to break. And I know oftentimes we don't even realize we're doing it when it, this is a, a speech pattern. Um, and mum, I know you're listening to this. Just know that you are getting much better at simply presenting the food and saying, here's dinner. Enjoy. So I want you to think about, I'm talking to everyone else now, not, not just you, mum. <laughs> I want you to think about when a time in your life or a certain situation in your life where you tend to make comments where you apologize for something when you've presented it, where you maybe when you've achieved something or you've created a report or you've created a presentation and instead of saying something and instead of saying like, oh, I didn't have much time to do it or, oh, I'm not really an expert and I couldn't really get all the, the resources done and instead of just saying that, just present the damn thing and say, here it is. Now, this does take practice. And I've noticed myself, um, you know, if I have friends over for dinner, I notice myself wanting to say, oh, I hope it's okay, everyone. But because I am aware of this, I, I, I'm, I'm aware and I try to stop myself from saying it. So, you know, it's not going to happen overnight where you can, you know, do this. But it's good, it's good to practice. Now, finally, I do want to talk a little bit about apologetic body language. Have you ever been in that moment where someone opens a door for you and they sort of stand to the side to let you go past and you kind of dip your head and hunch your shoulders over and like make yourself small as you like quickly pass through? Because it's like what's happening there, it's like you're saying, oh, I'm sorry, I'm taking up space. I'm just going to make myself as small as possible and, and just get through as quickly as possible so I'm not disrupting you or taking up too much of your time or your space. 
Have you ever done that? I used to do that. Well, I, I probably still do. Um, that in itself is apologetic body language. All right. So think about how your apologetic self shows up in your life. Okay. I want to move on to how you can take some steps to stop apologizing all the time. Um, but before we do that, let's take a quick break because I have something to share with you. Exciting announcement, Rockstar. I have two free webinars coming up. If you've liked what you've heard in this episode and you not only want to stop apologizing for stuff, but you want to be more assertive in general, then I highly recommend that you come along to these webinars or one of them. They're happening on October 21st and 24th at different time zones to suit all of you wonderful global people. And I'm calling the webinars are called The Keys to Assertive Communication. And in the webinars, you're going to learn what holds us back from being assertive, simple ways to be more assertive day to day, powerful mindset shifts for building confidence, how to project confidence through your body language, and how to be assertive without bragging. Now, if you can't make those dates, register anyway, as I will be sending you the replay. But do note, I will be launching the C-Method Academy at the end of the webinar and people who are there with me live will get a super early bird discount for the Academy membership. Now, this is only for people who attend the webinar. So if you're keen on joining the the C-Method Academy and you want to get it at the most affordable investment ever, then make sure that you are on that webinar. Go to thecmethod.com slash free webinar. That's thecmethod.com slash free webinar to register. The link to that is also in the description of this podcast in your app. Okay, let's get back to the show. Alrighty, let's talk about how we can stop apologizing. The first step is to notice what you are doing. This is the first thing that we do in if we want to make a change in any area of our lives. Start to be aware of apologetic language that you use. And notice, does it come up more in certain situations? Does it come up with certain people? Maybe it's just at work. Maybe it's just with senior people. Maybe it's just with a particular client. Be more aware. You may also like to get feedback from your family or colleagues and just ask them, hey, do I say sorry a lot? Do I... Is there a particular thing that I tend to apologize for? So noticing is the first step. The second step is to ask yourself, why am I apologizing all the time? Mm, Some self-inquiry. Think about maybe is it out of a desire to be liked? You know, if I say, sorry, I'm being polite, they're going to like me more. Maybe you're thinking, if I don't apologize, they're going to think that I'm rude. You know, where is that coming from? Maybe, you know, you have a fear of upsetting someone. Maybe as a child, it was instilled in you to be polite. Um, I know that in Australia, we have, we tend to, a lot of our culture comes from the British and the British are known for being really polite and apologizing for everything. And I know Canadians are also culturally supposed to be really polite and apologizing for everything. Um, so think about, you know, what, what, what was communicated to you when you were young? You know, how was it important to be considered polite? So that's step two, ask yourself why. And then three is to remove those apologies from your language. Now, this sounds very simple and I know it'll take time, especially if you're used to apologizing all the time and you've done it for a very long time. Um, I'll give you one example. If you tend to say, sorry, excuse me, you know, like let's say you're in the workplace kitchen, right? I'm, I'm talking like everyday, like simple, simple situations. Let's say you're in the work, um, sorry, someone's in the work ki- kitchen and you're going in there to make a cup of tea and someone's standing in front of the drawer that has the spoons and you need to open up the drawer to get your spoon out. What do you say? Do you say, oh, excuse me, sorry, just need to get into this drawer, right? That's 
you know, an example, excuse me, sorry, or when you're in the supermarket and someone's there with their overloaded trolley full of giant boxes of cereals and you just want to get through, get your can of tuna and get out and they're standing there and you need them to move. So you say, um, excuse me, sorry, right? Sorry, excuse me, I need to get through. The way you can say that without the sorry is you can say, excuse me, can I get through? Excuse me, I need to get through. All right. That is totally acceptable. You're not saying, get out the way. You know, I need to get to the drawer. I need to get my spoon because I need my coffee. You know, you're not, you're not saying it that way, saying, excuse me, right? That's polite. And you're smiling and you say it with, the, with a, a happy, friendly tone. Excuse me. Hi. Thank you. And then they move out of the way. Chances are they'll say, oh, sorry, right? Because everyone apologizes. They'll move out of the way and you simply say, thank you. You don't need to apologize for needing a spoon out of the kitchen drawer, okay? So this is one example of a day-to-day situation where you can practice not apologizing. Now, if someone else comes up to you and let's say you're standing in front of the spoon drawer, it's a very popular drawer, this one, you're standing in front of it, someone else comes in and they say, excuse me, or, you know, excuse me, can I get a spoon? Instead of saying, oh, sorry, and moving out of the way, just say, of course, or no problem, or sure thing, you know, and you say it with a smile. The other person is not going to go, oh, they're so rude for not saying sorry. It's not going to happen. So practice doing that. Practice not apologizing and being, you can still be polite without saying sorry. Say please, say thank you, you smile, you use a friendly tone. That is, they are all hallmarks of politeness. You do not need to apologize to be polite. Um, Something you can do, let's say, in a presentation or in a meeting. Those of you who have downloaded my free presentation writing template will know how important it is to start your presentation strong or to start your meeting strong. So you might have a story or an opening statement that that you start with. And it doesn't even have to be a story. It could literally just be, hi, everyone. Today, we are here to examine the findings of the last financial year's report, whatever it is, right? So you s- make sure that you start it with that sentence instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry that we couldn't all be here today or I'm sorry that we're starting late or, um, oh, so I, c- I couldn't quite get the projector working, so um, we're going to have to do it. Like, just forget all that. Like, just X out any of that waffle and just start, Okay. All right, so that was step three. It was a very long step. <laughs> I get very, I get very like riled up about this stuff. Okay, step four is to practice taking up space. I was at a Broadway jazz class the other day. Yes, Broadway jazz with like jazz hands and like da, like you're dancing on stage, which I just love. And the teacher kept telling us to make our movements bigger, to take up more space. So we're like prancing across the room and doing, I don't even know what they're called, the spin, pirouettes and spins and, and like yeah, just big steps, jazzy steps to get across the, the, the floor. And, he's, and the, the teacher explained to us, he said, he said, as adults, we worry about taking up space and we make ourselves small. Dancing allows us, to, allows us an opportunity to get big and take up more space. And I love this. I want you to think about the times where you've set up the back of a meeting room or, or you've taken up your spot at the back of a yoga studio or you've curled up in the corner of a cafe and put your bag really close to you or sat hunched over with your legs crossed at your desk, essentially making yourself small, sitting in the corner at the edge on the perimeter. Now, this, this is, in a way apologizing for taking up space because you, you don't want to, you know, you don't, you don't want to take up a lot of room. You don't want to impede on other people's space, perhaps. I ran a workshop on building a strong presence the other day. And when I had, so there was 30, about 35 people there. And when I had everyone stand in strong power poses, you know, like feet, hip width apart, hands on hips, chest puffed up, chin up, you know, hands in the air, like Wonder Woman style. I got everyone to move into these high power poses. 
and getting them there was like trying to crack open an armadillo. They look, a lot of people look very uncomfortable, you know, because they had to sort of move out of their tightly curled up small positions that they're so used to being in at the desk. So this is a great thing to practice. So I challenge you, if this is not something you normally do, I challenge you to sit at the front of the room. Take that seat that's front and center and sit up straight like you deserve to be there and that it's totally fine for you to take up that space. I also recommend, this is level two, spread out. Spread out your notepad and bag. Literally take up more space. Be like, yeah, I'm allowed to take up this much space. I'm important, right? Because you are. So you're literally taking up space. Now, if someone needs to then sit next to you, because sometimes the rooms fill up, just move your stuff and don't apologize for it, right? If someone comes in, there's no need to say, oh, sorry, I'll just move my stuff. Just move your stuff and go, there you go. Here's a seat for you. So give that a go. If you're driving in your car right now, I want you to practice taking up space. So wind down your window, put your arm on the on the sill and like kind of lean back and like make yourself big, you know, feel like you're literally taking up more space. I think one of the reasons why people really struggle when public speaking is they don't believe that they are worthy of taking up space. They don't believe they are worthy of simply being there and having people look at them. And I believe this is one reason why when we stand up in front of an audience, we start to uh, fiddle or move around or we talk incessantly and ramble because we feel like we have to somehow add value, we somehow have to keep talking, keep talking, keep talking because as soon as you stop talking and you stop moving, it's it's just you standing there. It's just you taking up space. And it's very scary to just simply stand there and be okay with taking up space. So doing these exercises, what I've suggested around your body language and being making yourself big and making yourself open and sitting at the front of the room and being like, you know what, I'm totally okay with taking up space that is then going to help you when you get up on stage and speak in front of people because then you'll be able to stand up tall you'll be able to move around the room with ease and you'll be able to acknowledge the other people sitting around there and you'll be able to stop and pause and simply be without the need to apologize okay so those are some things that I highly encourage you to apply now you might be thinking, uh, well, Christina, when do I actually apologize then? If I'm not, surely there's time and place. Absolutely, there's a time and place. And that time and place is when you have actually messed up. So when you realize that you did offend someone and they say, I was offended when you said that, right? Then if you truly feel sorry, then you, then you can say, I am so sorry. My intention definitely wasn't to offend you. I will be more aware next time, Okay. But only do that when you know that you've actually upset someone. So there's, of course, there is a time and place when you apologize. What I want to encourage you to do is to stop apologizing for things that that aren't necessary. Okay. So that is what I wanted to share with you. If you want a recap of this podcast, you can go to the show notes at thecmethod.com slash 233. But more importantly, I want you to sign up for the free webinars that are coming up because they're going to be so much fun. They're going to be live. They're going to go for an hour. There's going to be a bunch of people on there. You'll be able to ask questions of me live and it'll be an awesome conversation. I'm really, really excited for it. So to to sign up for the webinar, go to thecmethod.com slash free webinar and I cannot wait to see you there. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Keep on being awesome and I'll talk to you next week. I'm Christina Cantors and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed.